Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, continue the discussion on turbojet uh, analysis. So, we have um, looked at the this is what we are doing right now single spool turbojet analysis and we started looking at the uh, nozzle right now and uh, also nozzle we have to look at whether after burner on or off. So, this is exactly where we have stopped um, like started with the nozzle and there could be two different situation or scenario. So, if you recall the TS diagram uh, where this is the picture, I mean just to give you quick idea whether you have after burner here or not between 5 and 6 accordingly these things will happen. So, now we are looking at the nozzle. So, the first case we have taken without A B. Now, other case where we can take that with A B that means after burner is operative. So, in that case um, the expansion process in nozzle starts from 0 6 A to state 7. So, the pressure ratio between these two guy uh, would be 1 by 1 minus the critical pressure ratio eta n gamma n minus gamma n plus 1 divided by gamma n by gamma n minus 1. Now, again if the nozzle is unchoked the exhaust pressure will equal to the ambient one and the jet speed would be 2 C p n eta n T naught 6 a 1 minus p a by P naught 6 A which is gamma n minus 1 by gamma n. So, this is when the things is unchoked or if it is choked that means V 7 A B would be root over gamma n R T 7 A and then we can use the relationship. So, this would be C P n eta n t naught 6 a 1 minus p 7 by p naught 6 a gamma n minus 1 by gamma n. So, that is what you get and just to calculate the or rather show the total block diagram this is where your intake. Now, intake gets M 1, T 1, P 1, this is M dot A. From intake it goes to compressor, compressor it goes T naught 2, P naught 2, where compressor ratio is pi C from where it goes to combustion chamber. So, it goes to T naught 3, this is P naught 3 and then from there it goes to turbine. So, that means T naught 4, P naught 4 okay. and also the compressor this goes W C. Okay. Now, from turbine we get after burner. So, here we get T naught 5, P naught 5 and after burner we have M dot F A B in the combustion chamber we have m dot f okay. and then 
finally, from here we go to nozzle. So, this goes T naught 6, P naught 6 and also from here this comes here. So, the nozzle will get out T 7 V 7. Okay. So, that is the block diagram of this, this is for single spool uh, turbo jet. Okay. Now, we can see the performance parameter for this single spool engine. One is important is that specific uh, thrust, which is 1 plus A plus A, A B into V 7 minus V plus A 7 by M dot A P 7 minus P A and T S F C would be M dot A plus M dot A P A B by T. So, that could be calculated A plus A P A B. B 7 minus V plus A 7 by M dot to P 7 minus P A. Okay. So, these are the performance par parameter, if the up turbiner is not operative then F A V goes to 0, otherwise that F A V comes into the picture. Now, some of the important definitions which are going to be important in this analysis, one is the, so these definitions why they are important because these are uh, eventually used pretty much every day um, for the um, what I would say for designer practice. Uh, one exhaust gas temperature gauge. So, E G T. So, this is exhaust gas temperature which is measured with a thermocouple type pyrometer by monitoring E G T the pilot can get an idea of the engine's air fuel ratio. At an stoichiometric fuel ratio the exhaust gas temperature would be is different than at a lean or rich fuel ratio. High temperature can be an indicator of dangerous condition that can lead to catastrophic failure. So, this is one. Second one is the engine pressure ratio, which is EPR. Engine pressure ratio is also ratio of turbine discharge to compressor inlet pressure. So, EPR is used as an indication of the amount of thrust being developed by a turbine engine. If EPR gauge is used to indicate the power output of the turbojet and turbofan engines, pressure measurements are recorded uh, by probes installed in the engine inlet and exhaust. So, so, this data, so EPR system designs automatically compensate for the effect of air speed and altitude and all this. So, change in ambient temperature require corrections and that can be taken care of. Now, the bleed. So, bleed air is another in aircraft engine is a compressed air that can be taken from within the engine most often after the compressor stage, but before the fuel is injected in the burner. Bleed air has high temperature and high pressure typical values would be 200 to 250 degree centigrade to 275 kilo Pascal. So, this compressed air after the compression process is used in aircraft in many different ways. So, this is de-icing of the wing leading edge, pressurizing the cabin, pneumatic actuator, starting the remaining engines and pressurizing lavatory water storage tank. Also, it is used in de-icing 
of engine intake and cooling of turbine blades and uh, such uh, things. So, these are the important uh, uh, parameters which are often used in uh, regular design practices and uh, one is supposed to know all these. Now, the then we will move to the other one is the double spool turbojet. Now, the double spool turbojet that means what will happen is, so let us uh, see a schematic of a double spool turbojet here. So, this is a double spool turbojet, there is no after burner, here it is after burner and as I have already talked about that when you talk about this uh, double spool that means that um, you have one low pressure compressor LPC high pressure compressor similarly at the high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine which actually used to. So, that means they are connected in the single shaft to operate each other. Now, we can have a TS diagram for let us say we draw the TS diagram for this one which is without a b 1 that means, if I look at the T s diagram. Um, so, this is a go here a then p naught 2. So, this is 0 2 then this is p naught 3 which is 0 3 then this is P naught 4 that means 0 4 and then from here it will go to um, 0 5 that means P naught 5 then the expansion takes place uh, let us say. So, this is 0 6 P naught 6 then it again comes 0 7 p naught 7 then if there is no after burner this was 0 8 and then it comes back. So, this is where and this is 9 p 9. or rather instead of this is 0 3, 0 2, 0 5, 0 6, 0 7, 0 8 and 9. So, these are the points which are marked and uh, that means, you can see where it can be, it is upstream then 0 to this is 2, 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, then 7, 8, same 8 to 9. And then when it is with with after burner, so this is the one with after burner. So, 1 a this is 0 2, 0 3, 0 4, this is 0 5, 0 6, 0 7, and then it will 0 8 a this is 9 a. So, with after burner this is how the things would change and now these points are again a is ahead of the compressor then 2 here 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and then 9. 
Now, first we look at a situation where without a b that means, the after burner is not operative. So, first is L p c low pressure compressor. So, the low pressure compressor the pressure ratio is given as pi c 1 at an isentropic efficiency eta c 1 then what we get p naught 3 is p naught 2 into pi c 1 and t naught 3 would be t naught 2 1 plus pi c 1 gamma c by gamma minus 1 by eta c 1. Now, at the second it goes to H p c. So, here also the pressure ratio is pi c 2 and isentropic efficiency is eta c 2. So, at the outlet of the H p c it would be p naught 4 which is p naught 3 into pi c 2. Okay. So, pi c 2 and t naught 4 which would be t naught 3 into 1 plus pi c 2 gamma c minus 1 by eta c 2. Then we come combustion chamber. So, the temperature at the end of the combustion process is T naught 5 which is again generally known because it is the maximum temperature in the engine if the after burner is not on and this would be dictated by turbine inlet temperature. So, with that we get the pressure loss across the combustion chamber or P naught 5 equals to P naught 4 into 1 minus delta P C C percentage. Now, from the energy balance what we write m dot a 1 plus f C P H P naught 5 m dot a C P C T naught 4 plus eta b m dot f q r. Now, with here f is m dot f by m dot a. So, what we get f equals to C p h by C p c into T naught 5 by T naught 4 minus 1. So, eta b q r by C p c T naught 4 minus C p h by C p c T naught 5 by T naught 4. Okay. So, then we have the combustion chamber will go to then high pressure turbine. Now, high the high pressure turbine again it is driving the high pressure compressor. So, if the ratio of the power which is produced from the high pressure turbine goes to high pressure compressor is lambda 1, then what we can write W H p c is lambda 1 eta m 1 w h p t. So, typically lambda 1 in the range of 75 to 80 percent and eta m 1 is around 99 percent. So, mechanical efficiency is quite high that means, it converts the pretty much completely the power which is produced also you can see the percentage of the power around 15 to 25 percent power goes to run the compressor. So, that is quite um, then we can write once we understand this uh, logic of then T naught 5 minus T naught 6. So, we get T naught 6 by T naught 5 is 1 minus C p c by C p h T naught 3 lambda 1 1 plus f eta m 1 T naught 5 T naught 4 by T naught 3 minus 1. 
then the pressure ratios of the high pressure turbine and high pressure compressor are could be related like P naught 6 by P naught 5. So, 1 minus T naught 5 by T naught 6 eta T 1 T naught 5 which is gamma T by gamma P minus 1. So, let us say eta T 1 here is the isentropic efficiency of the high pressure turbine. So, this is the efficiency of the HPT. Now, similarly, we do the similar analysis for LPT. There, we assume that the lambda 2 or the percentage of the low pressure turbine goes to run the LPC because LPC is driven by this LPT and uh, then the mechanical efficiency would be another e lambda m 2. So, we can write equals to lambda 2 eta m 2 w l p t. So, which again handy to write t naught 3 minus t naught 2 which is lambda 2 eta m 2 1 plus f c p h t naught 6 minus t naught 7. So, here we get the ratio of T naught 7 by T naught 6 1 minus uh, C p c by C p h T naught 2 and lambda 2 eta m 2 1 plus f T naught 6. So, T naught 3 by T naught 2 minus 1. So, then the turbine and compressor pressure ratios are pretty much uh, related. So, what we can get that P naught 7 by P naught 6 would be 1 minus C p c by C p h into T naught 2 lambda 2 eta m 2 1 plus f eta C 1 eta T 1 T naught 6. And then P naught 3 by P naught 2 gamma C minus 1 by gamma C minus 1 which is gamma H. So, then uh, we can use again like the equation from the diffuser part and so this can look uh, quite messy, but uh, please keep this mind one do not need to actually remember this one can write down the equation and carry out this simple analysis. This is all from the simple thermodynamical analysis and writing and everywhere we need this isentropic relations and things like that. And that is why we have talked about so much about those things at the beginning. So, gamma h minus 1. Now, finally, we can come to jet pipe. So, here this is following the low pressure turbine, this is before the nozzle. So, total temperature remain constant. So, there only things may happen that jet pipe and T naught 8 would be T naught 7. And finally, we come to nozzle. Again, first the things that needs to be checked whether nozzle choking or not, then the critical pressure ratio is important. So, 1 minus 1 by eta n 
gamma h minus 1 gamma h plus 1 to the power gamma h by gamma h minus 1. So, if the nozzle is unchoked, then the outlet pressure is equal to the ambient pressure and then V 9 would be 2 C P n eta n T naught 8 1 minus P A by P naught A gamma H minus 1. So, this is the case when this is unchoked and if it is choked then the T 8 by T 9 has to be calculated which is gamma H plus 1 by 2 and the jet speed would be root over gamma H R T 9. Now, that is what happens when we have the engine without the after burner. Now, the second case could be with A B. Now, with A B so, the same treatment would be there till the after burner is on or the upstream of the after burner that means till the like. So, if you go back up to this point the analysis would be same like here the till the uh, beyond the LPT then only after that the after burner is on. So, we can take into account that and there the P naught A would be P naught 7 minus delta P A B. So, P naught A is uh, into delta P A B percentage. So, the maximum temperature in the cycle that would be T naught 8 A which is T max and also the fuel air ratio at the after burner can be calculated which is F A B again from the energy balance equation there C P 8 A T naught A minus C P 7 T naught 7 eta A B Q R minus C P 8 A minus T naught 8 A. Now, once we do that, we go to the nozzle. Again, similarly, the checking has to be done for the nozzle like P naught 8 A by P C, which would be again calculation of that uh, critical pressure and finding out whether the nozzle is choked or not and gamma H by gamma H minus 1. So, again if it is unchoked nozzle then the jet speed P 9 A B would be 2 C P n eta n T naught A 1 minus P A by P naught A gamma H minus 1 gamma H or if the nozzle is choked. So, then uh, the exhaust gases leave the nozzle with a temperature T 9 A which is T, T 8 by T 9 A would be gamma H plus 1 by 2 and V 9 A B would be root over gamma H or T 9 A. So, the sum of the performance parameter would be calculated and now. So, uh, the important part here is that uh, one has to see every time then. So, the only difference with A B is that the calculation as I said calculations up to low pressure turbine would remain the same. So, whatever we have done here all these calculations would be valid and this would be valid till the point that LPT calculations. And then after LPT only there would be a pressure loss in the after burner and then we can find out the from the energy balance uh, at the after burner 
um, this is the energy balance in the after burner we find out the failure ratio then again coming back to the nozzle we find out the critical uh, pressure ratio and then check the nozzle is choked or unchoked so this is how so we'll look at the other uh, just for the dual spool engine the performance parameter and all this in the next class